mind is a complex thing. So it only stands to reason that the training of the mind is going to have to be complex as well, involving lots of different factors that you have to bring into balance. In broad terms, the training comes down to three things, virtue, concentration, and discernment. And they feed off one another. The standard explanation is that virtue nurtures concentration, concentration nurtures discernment, discernment leads to release. But the actual Pali explanation of this is that concentration nurtured with virtue leads to great rewards. Discernment nurtured with concentration leads to great rewards. When the mind is nurtured with discernment, then it's released. In other words, there is a possibility of having concentration without virtue or having discernment without concentration. But in cases like that, they don't lead to great rewards. And it's also not necessary that when you're virtuous, the mind becomes concentrated, or when you're concentrated, that you gain discernment. These things are not billiard balls. You hit one, and that goes to hit the next, and that goes to hit the next, and you get into the pocket. It's not that neat a process. The mind is a lot more organic, has a lot more loose ends that have to be tied together. Which is why, even though it seems so neat and clearly laid out in the text, when you actually sit down and are dealing with your mind, there comes a question, well, what do I do now? The heart of the practice is the concentration. There's a sutta where the Buddha points out that of all the factors of the path, right, noble right concentration forms the heart, and everything else is its prerequisite, or its requisite, in other words, something that helps it along. So it's always good to have the mind in a state of concentration as best you can. When the life around that concentration is a virtuous life, that makes the concentration a lot easier. Because you don't find yourself doing and saying things that fill you with regret, that would get in the way of the concentration. And of all the elements of the, fa of the path, the concentration is the hardest. It's the one that you do the most, or have to do the most, in order to wrestle the mind down. The discernment is a lot more precise, and in some cases it does come without your having to do much of anything at all. You work on the concentration, trying to get more and more precise in how you practice it, how you understand it, how you apply it to different situations. And it's in the master of concentration that a lot of discernment has to come in. But then many of the insights that come as you're doing the concentration are not intended. Concentration is something you can intend. Insight you can't intend. You can work on it, you can analyze things, you can question things, but the fact of whether or not you're going to get the answer, that relies on a lot of factors coming together in the right way. And so it's trial and error. And as any trial and error process, there are going to be ups and downs. So as you're working on the concentration, you'll find that some days it goes well, and other days it doesn't go so well. And this is where your ability to deal with setbacks come in. This is an important skill in the practice, the ability to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and keep on going. And there are various aspects to this skill. One is learning how to look at things over the long run. Just because there's a setback doesn't mean that you're in an inexorable downward trend. Things can get set back for a while, and then they come back up. 
So when things aren't going the way you'd like to, you take it as an opportunity to ask questions. Okay, what did you do to get things done? This is why this is such a good place to practice, because the factors of what you're doing in the course of the day get simplified to a great deal. If you had a job that you had to deal with and lots and lots of people, it'd be hard to separate out exactly what you said, what you did, that set the mind off or set it into a tailspin. But with the number of activities you have in the course of the day, the amount of personal interaction you have in the course of the day are limited like this. It's a lot easier to pinpoint a certain thing you said, a certain thing you did, a certain thought that you allowed to take over the mind. And when you can pinpoint things in these ways, it's a lot easier to compensate for them. So that's one part of looking at the bright side of a down, downswing, that you, it's an opportunity to learn something. You thought things were going well, everything was taken care of, and all of a sudden you're shown an area where more work needs to be done. Well, again, don't let yourself get upset. Just realize, okay, there's more to this than you may have thought. After all, we're training the whole mind, and not just a few random skills. We're also not trying to put the mind through a meat grinder. In other words, just taking one single technique and just drumming away at it, because the mind will rebel in strange ways sometimes. But when you think of this as an all-around practice, you find that when you get stymied in one area, you can focus on something else. When the concentration isn't going so well, we can practice endurance and practice patience. And not just a mindless patience, it gives you an opportunity to look and question. So it's also an opportunity to develop a little bit more insight, because the two processes have to go along together, the insight and the concentration. And John Lee compares them to two feet when you're walking. You can't walk on just one foot. After all, simply hopping like that gets you worn out. You go back and forth. And if you ever watched a child learning how to walk, in the beginning it's awkward. You're not quite sure which muscles are necessary, which muscles aren't. But over time it gets easier and easier as you watch, as you pay attention. So if we approach this with an attitude of patience, it gets a lot easier. And it was realizing this is a long-term project, it's a big project. There's a lot to be learned. And it's learned by being observant, by making mistakes and learning from them. We don't like to make mistakes. Everyone wants the path neatly marked out for them. so they don't have to go back and forth, wandering off into the brush, losing the trail. But you learn a lot about the trail if you're in a situation where the wandering off doesn't get too serious or isn't too, too great a setback. And so it's a lot easier when you take the long-term view about this practice. Okay, there will be setbacks, there will be times when you wander off, but if you're observant, you can, you can catch it for yourself. Put yourself back on the trail. And you've learned an important lesson in the meantime. And John Fu once said that back in the days of John Mun and John Sao, they didn't give very detailed meditation instructions. Apparently John Sao would say, meditate and bring your mind down. That was it. It was up to you to figure out what it means to bring the mind down. And John Fuang said he practiced for a while, just keep it thinking down, 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 down. And as he thought down, 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 the body got heavier and heavier, and things got more and more unpleasant. So he realized that it must not be what he meant. And so he said, okay, meditate up, 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 up.
played with this for a while, learned a lot in the course of making a lot of false, false moves. And from our point of view, it might seem wasteful, but there's a lot you can learn from your mistakes. We don't like it, but it's an essential part of learning. Otherwise, it all gets too facile. Well, you know this and you know that, but do you really know it? Have you ever been in the middle of trying to figure out your greed, or figure out your anger, or figure out your delusion? You really wrestled with these things. Because it's only when you wrestle with them that you learn what their weak points are, where they can be overcome. Even if you don't overcome them the first time around, you learn something about them in the course of battling them. Better than just lying still there and letting them trample all over you. There's something exhilarating about taking on a really big project like this. Because otherwise, otherwise we just go through life sort of bumping into things a little bit and everything just seems too easy. And after all, there's no weight to our lives, no heft. Because the really important issues keep getting avoided. We don't want to go there, so we read a book about it and figure out what it's like and say, well, I don't have to go there now. I've already read the book. And then you move on. But we end up that way. Just life, life is just a matter of wandering around and not really getting anything accomplished, not really digging into anything. In this case, the hard knocks are not physical hard knocks, it's more mental hard knocks. But if you take it as part of the practice of learning how to gain release for the mind, the mind is not damaged by these things. It's actually strengthened by the, the effort you put into it, even when it seems to be stymied sometimes. You gain practice in learning to refine your determination, so it just doesn't come in spurts, that it's something continuous. You can keep at it, keep at it, keep at it, no matter how difficult it may seem and no matter how much you may seem to be in a, in a dead end. If you have the conviction that there's a way out, you'll find it, better than the person who doesn't have that kind of conviction. If you lack that conviction, then no matter what, you get stuck in some place and think, well, this is it, no way out, and then you give up, and you're lost. But if you're convinced there must be a way out, that gives you the chance to find it. And that way, in spite of your setbacks, you, you'll learn a lot. And if you've been through the setbacks, then you can explain them to other people. The people who have a really easy time meditating. Everything goes by the textbook. They don't have much they can teach others. There's nothing they can explain, because they haven't really been through it themselves, haven't really wrestled with it. When it's been hard, you don't forget. But always have that determination, always have that confidence that you can get through. And if you can keep that confidence alive, then you find that you can handle just about anything. And the whole mind gets trained, not just a specific technique in concentrating, but a whole approach to how you deal with the thoughts as they come into the mind, how you can direct them, how you can marshal your, your energy for when you really need it, a lot of energy to deal with it, and other times when you can deal with the more delicate or refined issues that come up. So it's not a neat process. It's not like school where you're told that you take this course and then you take that course and then at the very end we'll give you a diploma. It doesn't work out that way. There are lots of subjects you've got to study all at once. And sometimes the things you thought you learned, you turns out you really didn't know them, you've got to go back to square one. But if you learn this quality of persistence, endurance, being able to stick with things, patience. Because sometimes 
the issues require a fair amount of delicacy, and it takes a while to take apart these delicate issues. When you learn these qualities and you develop these qualities, you find that they'll see you through. And they're just as important part of the training of the mind as the qualities you see more carefully or fully explained in the books. They're what you bring to the practice, what you gain from the practice. In the sense of developing the whole mind, all around. John Lee has an image. He says, trees that give fruit very quickly are like banana trees. They give the fruit and then they die. And there's not much of substance to them. The trees that take a long time, those are the ones that have lots of branches. They can give you lots of shade, provide lots of fruit. So take heart. You're working on a big tree here, something substantial, something that will have lots of uses when you're done, and will give you lots of good benefits along the way. <laughs>